Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. You guys already know our subject for today. You clicked the video, you saw the thumbnail. We will be creating one of the Tweevils from Bratz and that is Casey. Yeah! I don't think that the Tweevils or even Birdeen have their own dolls. I was even doing some research to make sure I was looking through the wiki pages, but I honestly have not seen any legitimate photos of them, so this can all be incorrect. However, the Twinscraft here on YouTube and also Instagram have created their own version of the Tweevils, which is completely accurate to the show, um, as well as the TV and movie versions of the Bratz. So you guys should definitely check it out. It's literally so accurate and so, so cool. I wish they would sell this right now. I have and still am so, so inspired by Fenty, by Rihanna, especially the collaboration with Puma in 2017. It is literally pure art for me. It's a good mixture of royalty and also sportswear and streetwear in amazing pastel colors. Especially the spring and summer one, it is completely pastel heavy with hints of olive here and there and literally that inspired me to create the look I want for Casey. I want her to look like a beautiful Fenty model and I really wanted to update their style because the Tweevils literally never changed their clothes while the Bratz are just like, you know, changing fashion every single scene, I want the Tweevils to catch up and it's something that even Berdeen herself will approve. I wanted to retain the Tweevil key elements here and there like her bow, the heart earrings, you know, the color palette, everything is pink with hints of white, which is their favorite color, but it is a beautiful mixture of soft and also streetwear and it's just very, very contemporary. I obviously also designed an outfit for Kirsty. She is not left out. However, we are focusing on Casey for today's video, so let's go ahead and get started. Our victim for today is the 2018 Chloe. This is by Hayden Williams. As you can see, she has the piercing blue eyes and the platinum blonde hair. I really, really love her. I feel like she would be a beautiful base for Casey. Unfortunately, we will be rebodying her head, so that's the only thing we're using. I've expressed before that I never really cared for the Brad's body. I feel like they don't really showcase a lot of fashion designs just because of the shape and the materials that they use. They just don't look great for me, so I will be using an Ever After High CA Cupid body for Chloe. Most of the Bratz clothes will actually fit an Ever After High body or even a Monster High body. However, the pants are a little bit iffy because they will be ill-fitting. They're gonna look like really low-rise jeans, which is what they're trying to go for anyway. I'm not. I love high-waisted pants. I love the high-waisted look. So we're going for the Ever After High body. One thing that got me really excited with Hayden Williams sketches are the shoes. I thought they were going to be completely new, completely healed. I thought they were going to look very, very edgy and very fashionable. However, we got recycled shoes from way before, which is okay. They're still trying to revitalize the brand anyway. I wish they took the extra step to make them new shoes. Obviously, they had to keep the snapping mechanism because if not, it would be so difficult to dress the brats because of their large feet. Feet. Like I said, I wish they just updated the entire thing. But you know what they say, if you want something done, you have to do it yourself. And that's what I intend to do. I am going to try and give the whole snapping mechanism onto an Ever After High doll so I can give her new shoes like this one I sketched out, which is what I want, and also still give her the option to wear the older Bratz shoes. I taped my sketch right behind doll packaging just so that it's easier for us to remove when we are done and that it is completely accurate to what I want in terms of sculpting and for that I will be using epoxy sculpt. It is easy to use, it's self-drying, it's industrial, clay, so yeah just be careful and wear gloves because this will make you so itchy and dry. Some people were asking why but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on and build it up. 
clearly this is only half of a shoe we have to sculpt the other half later and put it together but this is just a greater way for us to actually create the design without going overboard in terms of sizing and so we get a clear view of what we're trying to do So now that the epoxy has dried, we can just completely peel it off, as you can see. I'm struggling. <laughs> no, but it's easy to peel off because it is a complete flat end and we still have the sketch down below. So we're just going to flip the entire thing and we're going to create the other half of the shoe. Now this part was very scary for me, to be honest. I just you know, I feel like everyone just doesn't like to fail and I felt like I was going to fail at trying to really capture a mirrored image. You know, obviously I still have the sketch down there, but in the end, after it was dried, after putting it together, I still had to modify the entire shoe because they were not completely symmetrical from one another. And I still had to do a lot of modifications in order to get one solid piece. So I'm not sure if you guys have noticed this, but the Bratz shoes don't really have a left or a right. They're completely symmetrical. Unless there is a specific design, you will not know what is left and what is right. There's no indication. So that was another problem for me because even if I had made a mold of my sculpted piece, I knew that it was not completely symmetrical. And so I had asked an expert on this subject, and that is Chayanin or Gothic Zombie from Instagram. He is such a talented doll maker. It is just so amazing what he can do with 3D modeling, and I'm really, really excited because I actually ordered the Ouija body over here onto the left. It is like an Ever After High body with double joints, different hands, different feet, and it's just amazing what he can do. So you guys should definitely check him out. I gave him the sketch of the shoe that I want him to create and also the measurements and I was literally flabbergasted at how quickly he made the shoe. I was so shocked. I was so astonished. I'm like, what do I do? Like, oh my goodness, what do I do with this? And yeah, I'm so 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 thankful. So thank you so much Gothic Zombie for making this project happen. He then sent me the file of the pair of shoes. Yes, we have a pair. It is completely mirrored, completely symmetrical, very distinct from one another. It's left and right. This took about three and a half hours, almost four, with lots of trial and error. I also wanted to show you guys both ways of creating the shoes. You can create it traditionally with clay and you can also 3D model it on the computer and have it 3D printed. And now we have our printed shoes ready for whatever. So for the most part, whenever you 3D print something, you will have horizontal lines everywhere to indicate how many layers you have made to create the sculpture or whatever you have printed. Over here, I did sand some of it already and I also filled in some gaps and holes with epoxy sculpt. And this is ready for mold making. As you can see, it's so clean and very, very smooth in the very front and I just didn't care in the back. If you choose to, you can use this as the final piece, as the final product. However, most of the time when people 3D print, it is not a completely solid object. It is very hollow inside, so I think it's a little too fragile to support a doll. So I will make a mold out of this and cast it in strong resin. To make the mold, I take my Smooth On Ooh Moo 25, I got it from Amazon. This dries so fast. When you mix it together, it is part A and part B. You mix equal parts together and then you get the mixture. We're going scientist, you guys. This is like chemistry. So we're pretty much mixing concoctions up in here. So make sure you have your gloves and also your goggles for safety. 
And as you can clearly see, I'm not wearing any of those, so please do as I say and not as I do. And when you mix it together, make sure it is completely mixed. There's no streaks or anything. You have 15 minutes of work time until it solidifies. So make sure you have that ready and completely mixed up. Have your shoes in the container that you wanted to have and pour from the very bottom and have it go up. This will minimize air bubbles. Before it completely solidifies, make sure to tap around the edges just to make sure that if there are any air bubbles, it will rise up to the top. Yeah! And then wait about 4 hours and we can finally peel it off completely. I made a slit in the back of the heel so that I can actually push it from the bottom and so that the heel is not going to break. Obviously the, the very fragile part about this is her heels, so let's just be careful. And now we have two molds of the left and the right and we can finally cast it in resin. So this is the same brand of Smooth On, but now it's called Smooth Cast 300. It's not ooh moo anymore. So it's Smooth Cast 300 Part A and Part B. We're doing the same exact thing with mixing it completely in equal parts. And okay, the work time on this is a lot faster. It literally is like three minutes of you mixing it and it will solidify. So just make sure to be fast, very thorough, very careful. See, look, now I'm wearing gloves. Yay, me! <laughs> but as you can see over here, I am carefully pouring it in and I am wiggling it around so that it goes everywhere. You just make sure it goes everywhere. Work time, like I said, is three minutes. So this will solidify right before your eye. Magic! Sha -la -la -la. So yeah, I was kind of freaking out and dare I say I had to redo it because this is not acceptable. So now it's a cleaner version, you know, I cleaned it up and now we can finally do the same exact thing and push out the casted resin. Now this is a lot stronger than the 3D printed heel, so I'm still, I'm, I'm sure that the heel can still break if like, you know, I push it, but it's a lot stronger and a lot heavier, which I like. And now we have a pair of shoes in resin completed. I'm gonna take a break from the shoes for now, and we're going to move on to her face. I know some of you guys are like here, like, what the heck is happening? What am I watching? Okay, calm down, we're here, we're moving on to the face, we'll come back later, let's take a break. Hey guys, what's up, and welcome back to your weekly routine, or you know, every three week routine. And we are going to go ahead and start on her face. First, let's go ahead and remove her factory paint with acetone or nail polish remover. Just make sure it has acetone in it for a smoother removal. After extracting all of her features completely, we go ahead and prime her face with Mr. Super Clear or MSC so that the pencils, the pastels, and also the paint have something to hold on. The three P's. Oh my god, three P's! Now as usual, I start with a lighter base color pencil just so that when I make a mistake, I can easily remove it with an eraser. Usually when you do prime the face with Mr. Super Clear and you start with a darker color pencil, even after erasing it, it will still be there. So just so that it's a lot easier for us to remove things, I start with a lighter color pencil. So to be completely honest, this is my second attempt at creating Casey's face. I have expressed before that I'm not really good at giving the brats look. I love how they make the brats faces. I don't have the intention of really deterring away from it. So I wanted her to look like a typical cute and elegant brat. Um, I think the only difference when I first did her face was that the eyes were a lot higher and that doesn't really go in with the formula of a brat's face. So I'm over here redoing her face and I am so proud of it you guys and I hope you guys like it as well. Thank you. 
I'm pretty much staying true to Casey's makeup palette. So she has blue eyeshadow, she has really, really dark eyebrows, pink lips, and of course, we're going to add the band aid later. But obviously, this is in my style. It's a little more contemporary in terms of how everything goes. Her eyeshadow is a little more exaggerated, and her wing liner is a lot sharper. Now you guys know I had so much fun creating this. I feel like whenever I do black eyeliner on any of my dolls, I just have the most fun and most satisfying feeling ever. Instead of making her eyebrows completely black, I decided to add the black towards the ends of her eyebrows just to have a gradient type of look, which you guys know I love. I feel like it's not as harsh as how they are in the show. They literally have pitch black eyebrows. And I also highlighted her brow bone so that it gives more of a dimension with her eye makeup. And now let's give her some black pupils. I had the most fun overlining her lips before when I did my first Bratz repaint. She looked a hot mess. You just cannot. You have to embrace the sculpt of these faces because if you work against it, I mean, for me, it's, it doesn't look right. And now because Casey has had three nose jobs, maybe more now, we are going to give her the bandage that she permanently has. <laughs> and for the sake of continuity with my artwork, I'm tapering her up to have clean edges and we're going to give her severe contouring. I didn't go too dark because she's not a drag queen, but I, st I did define it really well. I almost forgot to add her lower lashes. I don't know why I'm like missing this step, but thank goodness I keep looking at my artwork to see what the heck is missing. <laughs> I think peeling this off is also one of the most satisfying things. Like look at that, look at that clean line! I'm taking my white acrylic paint to paint over her scleras, her bandage, and also her teeth. Oh, and let's not forget the catch lights. And to really make her look more contemporary and more modern, we are using highlighter. And this is a real Jeffree Star Cosmetic highlighter. And this is the only thing that really works for dolls that I have noticed. And I just take my cotton swab and I just layer it there. I believe I layered four times. I sprayed it with MSC in between so that it sets in place. And as you can see, it literally highlights her cheekbones. It gives it such beautiful texture. She looks alive. Ugh, oh my god, I need to stop saying that. She, um, she gives me life. Like, this is blinding. Like, oh my god, I need some sunglasses pronto. For now, let's take a break from her face, and now we're moving on to her body. Uh, yes, we will be modifying this body, and I'm cutting her in half. This is Mananangal all over again. Please have adult supervision when you're doing this, or please just be responsible, and please be careful. But I'm cutting her up so that we can give her a smaller waist. I just hot glued a thicker wire to connect both of them. Um, this is the same exact height, I think, and I hope. But I just have it there to act as a spine for the clay, so it has something to hold on to. And I'm just using epoxy sculpt again. Although she's wearing a sweater dress from my artwork, she also is wearing a corset on top of it. Now, if I was just to use her normal body, it wouldn't have looked very accurate to the artwork because in the art, it's completely tiny and cinched in. And then when you factor in the fabric thickness and also the corset thickness, it wouldn't have an hourglass shape that I initially wanted. So I thought that exaggerating her waist a lot smaller will in the end give her the normal corseted cinched in look. 
Now instead of skin matching it, I just decided to make it an actual pink corset because why not? I think that's so cute and you can actually probably play around and make it into a top. As usual, this magic was made by Heather from Dolox Designs on Instagram. You guys should definitely check her out. This is so cool. I asked her to choose any pink fabric that she has, and she gave me this fluffy, kind of glittery almost type of fabric with some pleather um, accents, and I am in love, and I got so inspired after I got this. So thank you so much, Heather. I'm just gonna add this light pink trim on her dress, um, on her sleeves, on her cutout shoulders, on her neck, all over the place where it needs to be. And this would literally tie in a Fenty slash Tweevil royalty look. And now we have everything decorated with the ruffle trim. It's so nice. I love the pop of white. And now we can go ahead and move on to her corset. Now for this, I'm just taking a white pleather fabric. It is a little stronger than usual. And we're just drawing the perfect corset shape. I'm actually going to go ahead and put the dress on her so we can kind of eyeball the corset and where it's at if we need to make any adjustments. I mix two pink colors with a Mod Podge just so that it gives it more elasticity. And then after it's dried, I'm adding snaps in the back of the corset so we can secure it tightly. I'm tying a string around her waist so we can get rid of the excess fabric and maybe push it onto the back so that when we put on the corset, it is completely clear out of excess fabric. As you can see, she looks normal in the waist. It doesn't even look small anymore. Um, I did add another string in front of it to really emphasize a more hourglass figure. And now it's time to create the giant bow that goes behind her and I got this satin fabric from a local fabric store. It's really nice, it kind of frays and I'm just cutting out two rectangle shapes and I'm just sewing it good side to good side. I know I'm sewing you guys, like it's one of the rarities that you guys see me sew. Without completely sewing it shut, I went ahead and reversed it and now we're going to add some pillow fluff in it. And to sew it shut, I use a ladder stitch. And now let's go ahead and adorn this bow with lots of trims and more ribbons. And we're going to create the perfect Fenty bow. And now we have completed the bow and I also added snaps onto the bow and also her corset so we can secure it completely. Now that her upper body is almost complete, let's move back down to the shoe area. And right now I'm going to take my saw and we're going to cut off her ankles. Again, please be careful. Please have adult supervision. Please. But it was actually quite easy um, cutting it off. You can probably use like a gigantic scissors or something too. Using a manual drill, I'm going to go ahead and widen the holes that is already there in the ankle. If you guys don't know, these legs are kind of hollow already, so this is just widening it and, you know, so that our screw can fit. So this is what I'm going to use in order to connect the legs and also her shoes. I got this from Home Depot. And it is a hanger bolt. As you can see, it is completely flat on the other end and pointy on the other. I'm just inserting the pointy end onto her actual legs using 
a lot of tools to actually connect it because the legs were still very stiff and it was not as wide as I thought. But now you can see we have a peg. And now we're doing the same exact thing to the resin shoes. We're going to take our manual drill and we're going to drill the hole in there, same exact size, and then we will try and insert the bolt in it. The first few tries were a little stiff and it was a little hard to actually get it on. Um, at the same time, I was trying to be careful with her actual heel part not to break. But after a few tries, it goes in swimmingly. It's so smooth now and it actually locks in. Obviously, if you twist a little more, then it's going to fall down. But it's there and it's heavy and it blends in correctly. Well, size-wise. Now it's time to paint it and color match it. I tried my best at color matching her skin and I think I did pretty well and of course the pumps needs to be pink or else they will get fired. And of course we are not going to let her walk around with non-designer shoes so she can only wear Louboutins with the red bottoms. You guys at this point I was freaking out because it was looking amazing like I cannot believe this is happening and I was able to achieve this aesthetic. Uh, let's go ahead and decorate it, add some bows, add some fruit fruits, and we're almost done. For her choker, I'm using the same exact pleather fabric that I used for her corset and I'm painting it Mother of Pink. And then I'm taking this jump ring, which you can get in any um, arts and crafts store, usually in the jewelry area, and we just have it like here. I just closed it. I'm actually going to add a smaller piece as well, so this will be a double choker look. And to finish off her face, finally, let's go ahead and add lashes. We're like working up and down you guys. Sometimes it's, it helps to take a break from one area to another so you can actually kind of refresh your mind, you know? And I'm also adding some gloss to her lips. And here is a before and after of Chloe and Casey. And you guys, this is my first time being proud of a Bratz repaint. I gotta tell ya. <laughs> Let's go ahead and work on her hair and give her her fluffy bangs, her sassy bangs. So I found this in the sticker section and they're like, they're glitter 3D stickers and I thought they were perfect as earrings because they're heart shaped and I just glued them onto a pin and they're literally perfect you guys. And last but not the least, her hair bow was created using the same exact technique as the gigantic hair bow. I just wanted to keep it a little more simple so that it doesn't compete with the rest of her outfit. Thank you.